Hi, this is Stefan Gonick, expert EFT practitioner, trainer, and soulmate attraction mentor from EFTalive.com and singletosoulmate.me. In this training video, I'm going to be teaching you a really cool and practical variation of standard EFT called the EFT Choices Method. The Choices Method was created by Patricia or Pat Carrington, and it was created to address a missing piece in standard EFT. See, in standard EFT, the whole focus is on tuning into and clearing the negative energy that is present in a situation. So if there's something that you're struggling with, some kind of a problem you're trying to address, you tune into the negative energy of it and you keep tapping until that negative energy has been released. The one thing that's missing in standard EFT is that there's no structured, regular way of bringing in positive energy. The assumption with standard EFT is that once you clear out the negative energy, sort of the positive alternative will just sort of naturally emerge. It's like you removed your block, so whatever the you know new positive development will be will just uh, emerge as sort of an organic natural process, which actually does happen a lot of the time. But there's a lot of people who want to find some way to bring in positive statements in addition to just tapping on the negative all the time, but the way that people tend to do it often doesn't work very well. And so Patricia Carrington came up with a, her particular formula for incorporating positive statements into the EFT basic recipe in a way that works really well. And that's what we're going to be learning in this tutorial. So the EFT choices method is used to help accelerate us moving in the direction of positive. So like I said, it's not just focused on trying to clear out the negative, but helps accelerate us moving more quickly towards the positive. So for instance, you can use the choices method to help shift a negative belief to a desired positive belief, or it can help you, you know, shift from an old negative behavior towards a new, more positive behavior that you're desiring. And it can be used for a lot of other things as well, but those, those are the times that I tend to use it the most. Some people use the choices method for almost everything, but the places where I will tend to use this particular tool in my toolbox is in these two categories. It's a, it kind of, it's a quicker way to shift negative beliefs and, and also to, like I say, to move into new, more positive behaviors. So now the prerequisite to learning the EFT choices method is that you already need to know how to do the, the basic EFT recipe. So you have to know standard EFT and know the basic recipe. Now, if you don't already know the EFT basic recipe, then I have a video on YouTube called How to Do EFT. In fact, if you do a search on YouTube, it's the number one video, so it'll be the first one that comes up. Uh, you can also go to my, my website, eftalive.com, and go to the How to Do EFT page. Now, assuming that you already know the EFT basic recipe, the EFT choices method is essentially a modification to the basic recipe. And it involves creating a positive choice statement in addition to the usual problem statement. So you have, in the basic recipe, you, you create a problem statement, or some people call it the reminder phrase, and you just use that for, for all your tapping. With the EFT choices method, you still come up with a problem phrase or reminder phrase, uh, but in addition, you come up with a positive choice statement that you can think of as like a solution to the problem you're trying to address. So that's sort of the, the most general way of thinking about what the choice statement will be. So I'm going to give you a, a poor example uh, so we don't have to think too much about what makes a good choice statement right off the bat so that we can first go over the structure of how to do the choices method in terms of the tapping and then we'll come back and spend the rest of the time on learning how to, to come up with a really good, effective choice statement. So this poor kind of quick example, the problem statement might be that I'm afraid of flying. So in standard EFT, you would tap on your cry child point and say, even though I'm afraid of flying, I deeply and profoundly love and accept myself three times. And then on all the points, you would just tap on the, fear, uh, the phrase, I'm afraid of flying. Now, in the choices method, you would have, you know, the same problem phrase, I'm afraid of flying, but you come up with a positive choice statement. 
And in this case, the example is, I choose to feel calm and relaxed when flying. So you can see how this would be a kind of solution to the problem being afraid of flying. Now you can come up with much better choice statements than that. We're, as I say, we'll come back to that. Now, why do we phrase it as a choice? I choose to feel calm and relaxed when flying. And I could just say, even though I'm afraid of flying, I feel calm and relaxed when flying. That would be in the form of an affirmation. Well, the reason why we, we phrase it as a choice statement, I choose to feel or whatever, is because when we express something in the form of, of a choice, that I choose something, it's a lot easier for our mind to accept that than a standard affirmation where you say something as if it was true before it's really true. So if you just take a moment to think about it, let's say, for instance, you were trying to lose weight and you, know, you currently weighed, say, you know, uh, 150 pounds and you want to weigh 120. Okay, so if you're using standard affirmations, you would just say, you know, I weigh 120 pounds, I weigh 120 pounds. Or you might say, you know, I eat healthy and I weigh 120 pounds, something like that. So that'd be your affirmation. So just try saying that, regardless of what your weight is, just try saying that. So say in your mind, I eat healthy and I weigh 120 pounds. Now try saying it this way. I choose to eat healthy and weigh 120 pounds. And what you notice is that when you say an affirmation, your mind generally objects because it's not true. So you're saying something as if it's true and your mind goes, nah, <laughs> no, it's not true. It's, there's this sense of discord that that's not true. And you're with affirmation, you're sort of trying to push through that. Whereas with a choice statement, uh, your mind doesn't object. And so it's, it's much easier to receive than an affirmation. So what we do then, once we've come up with our choice statement, is we incorporate it into a, a modified version of the tapping process. And we're going to go over that right now. So the new form of the basic recipe using the choices method is we first start by changing the setup, setup affirmation. So normally the setup affirmation is even though problem phrase, I deeply and completely love myself or I deeply and completely accept myself or some variation like that. With the choices method, we change it to while tapping on the cry chop point, even though problem phrase, I choose whatever the choice statement is. So in the case of the fear of flying, it would be even though I'm afraid of flying, I choose to feel calm and relaxed when flying. Okay, so like I say, you see it three times while we'll tapping on the karate chop point. And then you do three rounds of tapping. And on the first round, it's a, it's a regular standard EFT tapping round. So at every point, you just say the problem phrase. So in this case, it would be, I'm afraid of flying, I'm afraid of flying, I'm afraid of flying, I'm afraid of flying. So you just say your problem phrase at every point, and just like normal. So you do a run round through all the points. Now the second round, you do just the choice statement by itself. So at every point you would say, I choose to feel calm and relaxed when flying. I choose to feel calm and relaxed when, when flying. So you would do that at every single point. Now the third round, you alternate from one point to the next between the problem phrase and the choice statement. So on the first point would be, I'm afraid of flying. The second point would be, I choose to be calm and relaxed when flying. Third point would be, I'm afraid of flying. Fourth point, I choose to be calm and relaxed when flying. Now, depending on how many points you use, uh, if, you, if you have an even number of points, it'll come out fine because you always want to end on the choice statement. If you are somebody who uses an odd number of points, then when you get to the last point, uh, you'll be on the problem phrase at that point. Just stay on that point and then also say the choice statement there. So like I say, you always want to make sure you end with the choice statement. So once you've done those three rounds, you have completed what Pat Carrington calls the choices trio, which would be you know, her modif modified version of the EFT basic recipe. Uh, what I usually do at that point is take a deep breath, and then you check back in with how intense the issue is, you know, whatever the problem is that you're addressing. So in the case of a fear of flying like this, maybe it was a nine to begin with, you do a choices trio, maybe now it's a six or a seven. And then you would start over and do the whole thing again. And you keep doing that until 
you know, you get the result that you're looking for. If, if you're feeling so emotional intensity, that intensity would have come down to zero. If you're trying to shift a negative belief, then that belief, uh, you know, you measure negative beliefs by how true they feel in your gut on a scale of zero to 10, where 10 is totally true and zero is totally false. And you just keep doing choice trios until that negative belief came down to zero. And maybe the positive belief uh, was a high number. So the structure of using the choices method is actually pretty straightforward, as you can see. You know, once, once you've picked your choice statement, you just fit into this little structure or formula and just keep repeating these choice trios until, until you get the results you want. The challenging part of using the choices method is coming up with a good choice statement. So now we're going to spend the rest of the time talking about how to pick effective choice statements. So Pat Carrington talks about the three rules of effective choice statements. The first rule is to be specific and, and to express exactly what it is you're wanting. Because there's a tendency to say, I want it to be better than it is now. So it would be sort of a relative term. Like for instance, you know, I choose to be more confident, something like that, or I choose to to lose weight or to weigh less or you know these are relative terms and when you use something like that then you know the slightest change would be success but it's not really what you're wanting right there's going to be a, a specific thing that you're wanting a specific amount of change rather than just better than it is now okay so that's one thing you want to be specific and concrete uh, now the second point is actually one of the most important parts and and that is what she calls creating, quote, pulling choices. Choices, Choice statements sort of pull you in the direction because the wording is just so appealing and exciting. It just makes you want to go there. Even though you're not there yet, it's like, ooh, yeah, I want to go there. That's, what, that's, that's where I want to be. You know, that would feel so good. So you want to try and word it in that way. So that's kind of one of the most important parts of a good choice statement. And then the next thing is to go for the best possible but realistic outcome. So it's like, well, what's the best possible goal that you can real realistically imagine from where you are now? If you try and reach way too far ahead, then your psyche is gonna go, forget it, it's just not possible. So you wanna be able to stretch to the best possible outcome that feels you know, realistic given your starting point. Now that's Pat Carrington's three basic rules, uh, but I've added a, a fourth way of thinking about it that I find to be really effective in trying to think of good ways to word things. So one of the things I do when I'm working with clients is I'll say, if you didn't have the problem anymore that we're trying to address, like for example, that fear of flying, what is something really good that you'd be able to do or feel or believe instead, depending on what your goal is? So if you didn't have the problem anymore, what is something really good or cool that you'd be able to do or feel or believe instead? So let's look at some examples. First of all, the first thing that people tend to come up with when they try and create a choice statement is a simple opposite to the problem. But these simple opposite choice statements tend to be pretty boring and uninspiring. And that's what we started with to begin with. So, you know, the fear of flying, was the problem statement. The opposite is I feel, instead of feeling afraid, I feel calm and, and relaxed. So that's a simple opposite of the problem statement. And it, those tend to be kind of boring. And it's not that they won't work at all. You know, it's not a bad first thing to try, but they're not pulling you in that direction. They're okay. You know, they're sort of ho-hum, ho so-so. So ideally we want to do better than that. So we want our choice statements to feel exciting and inspiring. So let me just give you an example. Uh, these are like little sub phrases that we would use within uh, our choice statement. So Pat Carrington recommends using phrases like, you know, I choose to let it be easy to whatever it is, or I choose to surprise myself by, and she likes the word surprise by because it creates this sense of anticipation and intrigue. So that's a nice one. I choose to find a creative way to do whatever it is. Again, this sort of opens up possibilities. That sense of, I choose to find a creative way, creates a sense of, of openness and possibility. I choose to find it fun to do whatever. You know, remember, we're trying to move from something difficult to something better. 
uh, and so I find it fun to again adds a, a nice energy to the thing we're trying to do. Um, the words ingenious or unexpected again gives that sense of creativity or, or you know openness and anticipation things like that. So these are all you know nice phrases that can you can be used to spice up your choice statement. So let's do some examples. So I already, we already talked about, I choose to feel calm and relaxed when flying. That's a boring choice statement. So let's try a, a nice alternative to that. If I wasn't afraid of flying, what might I be able to do? Well, I might be able to take delight in the magnificent views instead of being afraid, All right? So notice the difference between the energy of these two different choice statements. So I have this fear of flying that I'm trying to address I choose to feel calm and relaxed when flying. If you think about that, it's like, well, yeah, okay, you know, that'd be nice. Or I choose to take delight in the magnificent views when flying. Doesn't that feel juicier? So you get, you see how that that would be a choice statement that, like, you would look forward to that. It's like, oh yeah, that'd be great. Wouldn't it be so wonderful to be able to look out the window and instead of being scared, seeing you know, these magnificent views, right? Not just nice views or pretty views, magnificent views. I choose to take delight in the magnificent views when flying. So that's a kind of choice statement that has a, you know, much more uh, inspiring feel to it. So that's the kind of thing we're, we're looking for. So let's do some more examples. So here, here's an uh, example uh, from Pat Carrington. Uh, there's a woman who wants to be more effective communicating with her husband who tends to find it difficult to pay attention to her. So you can understand that would be very frustrating. So here's an okay cho choice statement. That's, again, just a starting point. Often the way we do these create choice statements is you actually start out with an okay one, and then you go, all right, now let's see how I can juice it up. So okay sto uh, choice statement is, I choose to communicate in a way that gets my point across. So as you can see, not exciting, not inspiring, kind of boring. But it's the direction we're trying to go. So here's some better options. I choose to find a create creative way to get my point across. See, already that's more interesting. Find a creative way to get my point across. Or I choose to surprise myself by finding easy and enjoyable ways to get my point across. So again, more interesting. So I surprise myself by finding easy and enjoyable ways. So something to look forward to. Or I choose to find it easy and enjoyable to get my point across. I actually like the first two options better than the third one, but you know, these are all, any one of these is better than the first one. I just choose to communicate in a way that gets my point across, which is kind of dry and not that exciting. So let's look at another example here. Uh, this one's a really cool one that came from uh, a Choices Manual by Pat Carrington. So one of uh, Pat's uh, clients, we'll call him Brian, was driving to a very important interview and get caught in this huge traffic jam that was going to make him very late. So you can imagine how that'd be distressing. Now with standard EFT, we would just tap on the distress, the frustration, the fear, the impact it's going to have on his uh, interview and things like that. So you'd just be tapping him to try and relax and clear out the negative. But with the choices method, he could take that a step further. So what he could have done, you know, again, starting with a kind of an okay or boring-ish choice statement, he could say, even though I feel furious and anxious about the traffic jam, I choose to be calm and confident when I walk in for the interview. So it's okay, you know, it's not bad. But he came up with something much more creative. Even though I feel furious and anxious about the traffic jam, I choose to have this unexpected delay work to my advantage. So it's not that he knew in advance how it was going to work to his advantage, but isn't that an interesting choice statement? I choose to have this unexpected delay work to my advantage. So the tapping initially would help him calm down, but there's this extra element of I choose to have this unexpected work delay work to my advantage. So it's going to it creates this openness to possibility again. So what happened in this situation with Brian? So the first thing he did is he tapped his distress down to zero with doing a bunch of choice statement trios. You do the choices method trios. And then 
Once he had calmed down, he thought of a way he could tell his interviewers on his cell phone about the delay coming across as wonderfully cool under trying circumstances. And then, as he's sitting in traffic, he planned how he, can, he could condense his presentation in a way that impressed his interviewers with his on-the-spot resourcefulness. And, of course, as he came into the interview, his calmness and confidence were very impressive as well. So Brian ended up doing very well in this interview in a situation that could have easily totally derailed him, all by using EFT and, in particular, the EFT choices method. So let's do a couple more examples. So here's an example of using the choices method to help move from a undesired behavior towards a new desired behavior. This is actually a personal example. Uh, many years ago when I first, well, before I learned the choices method, but many years ago, I used to feel shy and reserved at parties and group events. And I would tend to kind of hang out on the periphery and you know, stand by the food table or whatever. And, you know, I might try and find some individual to talk to, but I generally felt pretty shy and reserved. And I wanted to feel uh, more outgoing. And when I tuned into what was going on for me, I realized that basically I was just afraid that people would judge me and not like me. You know, pretty common experience that I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. And that's what caused me to feel kind of shy and reserved. But like I said, I wanted to be more outgoing. So I decided to use the choices method. Now, if I was doing just regular EFT, I would just keep tapping on my fear that people would judge me and not like me. And as a result, I'm sure I would have been more relaxed at, at parties and group events and stuff like that. But I wanted to you know, speed up the process and also move in the direction of a new desired behavior, which was instead of hanging on the periphery and being shy and reserved, I wanted to walk right into the middle of the room and be, like I say, outgoing, friendly, and, and, and enjoy connecting with new people. So here's what I came up with for the choices method. So I started with the problem phrase, even though I'm afraid that people will judge me and not like me, I choose to be surprised and delighted by how fascinating everyone is. And the reason why I came up with that phrase is that I was realizing that if I'm afraid that people are gonna judge me and not like me, then my intention is turned inward. Right? I'm sort of a, kind of imagining that people around me are going to not like what I do or say, and they're going to be judging me. So my attention is kind of focusing inside myself and, and this fear of being judged. But if I want to be outgoing, then my attention needs to be focused outward towards the people who are, at, who are present in this group. So I came up with this choice statement. I choose to be surprised and delighted by how fascinating everyone is. So as I'm tapping in that statement, that choice, you know, I'm, I'm releasing the fear that people are going to judge me and not like me, and I'm sort of inst instilling within myself this feeling of I choose to be surprised and delighted by how fascinating everyone is, which is making me look forward to it. It's like, wow, I'm looking forward to talking to people and, and being surprised and delighted by how fascinating they are. And it worked really well. It, it, it radically changed my experience at parties and, and group events. So instead of being this shy, reserved person, it's like, ooh, who am I going to talk to next? And coming from this place of anticipating people being fascinating, then, you know, I would be, I would came across much more open and interested as I'm talking to people because there was this, I, was, I had this attitude of, ooh, how are you going to be fascinating? <laughs> you know, this next person I'm talking to here. So what's going to be fascinating about you? I look forward to finding out, right? So it had a really, uh, a cool impact on, on my behavior in that way. So it worked really well. Let's do another example. So here's an example of using the choices method to help shift a negative belief. So one of the a, a fairly common belief that I encounter with my clients is this belief from their childhood experiences that people don't care about my needs. You know, let's say this, you know, this person grew up with in a family structure where the way their parents reacted when they tried to express their needs was a neg they would have a negative reaction. So it's, you know, it makes sense. It's natural that they would come to the conclusion that, oh, people just don't care about my needs. But it's not actually true, right? It's maybe their parents didn't or they weren't able to be there for her or his needs. But it's not true that people in general won't care about this person's needs. 
And this person theoretically understood that, but the fear was still there. Now, regular EFT, we would just simply tap on this negative belief. People don't care about my knees. People don't care about my knees until hopefully it would lose its, its potency and it would feel less true. And then, you know, over time, the person would become more, uh, you know, willing or able to express their needs and things like that. But with the choices method, we can speed that up. So, like I say, with the old belief, if I, if I have this belief that people are not going to care about my needs, then I'm going to have a hard time expressing my needs. So let's look at how we would work with that with the choices method. Now, in this case, I actually came up with a choice statement that both addresses the negative belief and also helps encourage a new behavior at the same time. So we would have the normal problem statement, even though people don't care about my needs. And if you're not sure about how you shift negative beliefs with EFT, uh, I have a, a, an article about that that you can check out on my, or actually, sorry, it's part of my newsletter. As the, in fact, it's the very first uh, newsletter in my newsletter is how to use EFT to shift negative beliefs. But in any case, let's look at what we do with the choices method. So even though people don't care about my needs, I choose to courageously, courageously express what I want and warmly revel in those people who respond well. Because the truth is, sure, there are going to be some people in the world who won't care about this person's needs, uh, but most people will. The majority certainly will. So the idea is that I want to courageously express my needs and what I'm wanting to lots of people and notice who responds well and gravitate towards those people. But it has to start from the, the place of courage. Like I have to have the courage to go ahead and put out what I want, put out what I need, and then just notice who responds well, rather than assuming nobody's gonna respond well. So I kind of build, build both parts in there. So I choose to courageously express what I want and warmly revel in those people who respond well. So, you know, as we're reducing the fear, I'm also sort of building in the sense of courage that, yeah, I'm going to go for it. You know, even though I have this sort of lifelong pattern of holding back my needs or wants, I'm going to courageously express what I want and then warmly revel in those people who respond well. So that, again, it helps people move in the direction of the positive more quickly than standard EFT. Now, these two examples that I gave you, the one for choose to be surprised, surprised and delighted by how fascinating, every, fascinating everyone is, or, or this one, you know, these are appealing to me. But what you need to do is come up with a choice that's appealing to you, right? Everybody is, is you know, has what works for them. There's no universal choice statements that are going to work for everybody. So you want to come up with phrases and ways of describing it that are appealing to you. If you're a practitioner working with clients, then you want to come up with way that uh, words that is appealing to your client. And it tends to, we tend to do that as a collaboration. So the client comes up with the first version, and then you help them try and spice it up and make it more appealing, make it stronger, make it more inspiring, things like that. So anyway, that's the basics of the choice method, choices method. So where do you go from here? Well, if you want to learn more about the choices method in depth, uh, Pat Carrington has a great choices manual. That's where I got a lot of this material for this training. And in the, if you're on YouTube right now, uh, in the description below this video, I provide a link uh, for you to be able to get the manual, so you don't have to search around for it. If you want to learn more about EFT in general, uh, I have many EFT resources on my website at eftalive.com. And as I mentioned, I have this newsletter that you can get and you can sign up for where the very first uh, episode of the newsletter talks about how to use EFT to, to shift negative beliefs. And then every newsletter after that is, is other practical, helpful tips on using EFT to improve and enhance your life. And if you are wanting a place to practice, practice the choices method with another person, uh, on Facebook, I have a group called EFT Tapping Buddies for Everyone. You can apply there and find lots of people to hook up with. At the time of this video, there was over 800 people in that group, and it keeps growing uh, almost every day. So anyway, hope this video is helpful, and keep tapping.